Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week. In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover how to figure out the actual quantity of how many sheets of JIP will we need for this project. Now, the quantity takeoff is based off of the model, so the model has to be built correctly. So, if I zoom in close here, you'll notice that this wall does have two layers of JIP on it. Uh, other walls may not have any JIP at all. So, if you do have a scenario like this, I want to show you. You'll notice that this wall has JIP on the outside and JIP on the inside. So this will actually give us a false reading. That's going to be extra square footage of JIP that we don't need. So you will have to take your time and go through and adjust the wall types. For instance, this would only be JIP on one side. So this does take a little bit more working on your model to get it right. So when you're working in Revit, you can quantify it, but you have to uh, have the information in correctly. Trash in means trash out. So let's go ahead and see how we can run the calculations here. So we're going to go up top um, to our... Uh, view tab, we're going to fire up schedules. Now instead of using the regular schedules, we're going to go material takeoff. When we fire up material takeoff, it's going to say, what do you want to pull materials from? And what this does, it peels the wall apart and peels the ceilings apart and floors apart, and it separates the materials out and will give you the square footage of those elements. Now I want to figure out the total JIP or, or sheetrock in this residence. Now we use the sheetrock or the JIP on walls and on ceilings and on fur downs etc so i have to make sure that revit goes out and gets all those pieces so what i'm going to do is use what's called multi-category this is very powerful in revit for quantifying things across multiple categories now what i'm going to do is fire up multiple uh, multi-category and hit ok now i need to give it a name which i should have but we'll come back to that later so multiple categories, I'm going to say search all categories for what? I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to say materials. Now, just in that, you think that's a lot of stuff, and it is. So go out and find all the material names, push that in, and then go find all the material areas and push that in. So right there, you can see a lot of stuff is being quantified. So that sounds good to us. Go ahead and grab those those bits of information. Now, we may also want to know where is this thing being pulled from? Is it pulled from a ceiling? Is it pulled from a wall? So I'm going to say go out and also get the type. And you'll see when I fire this up how this works. Now, sometimes if you load multiple objects uh, or someone's customized their families, you may get multiple types. Um, in Revit 2018, 19, and 20, you can concatenate or group those together. I'm not covering that in this video. I'm just going to put two separate columns. Uh, but you can blend those columns to be one. Now, now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and hit OK, and Revit is going to rip through the model, and it's going to pull all the materials. Now, if I move this out, you'll notice that lots and lots of material. Now, if you can see on my screen, the slider over here as I slide down, notice it. there is a bazillion pieces of material in here. So how do we just go get the sheetrock or JIP? So let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Fields now. So we told Revit to go out, grab the material name, uh, grab the area, and then grab the type where it's being pulled from. Now you'll notice in this column that type C, the, or the C column, is really not being used, so it's probably in some mechanical equipment or something. So I'm actually going to just get rid of that. I hit OK and it tightens up my chart. I'll now make it a little wider so it's easy to read. Now, I only want JIP, so let's go back to Fields. And that's what I've done in previous videos. You can go directly to Fields or click on any of these button, buttons and go directly to the particular tab. If I go to Fields, I'm going to walk across. I say Filter. Now, what do I want to filter out? I just want to know gypsum wallboard. So I drop this down, go find the material that has a name that equals, drop this down, and choose which one you want. This is going directly to the model and choosing all the materials that are available if they're being quantified in this list. Fire it up. Now I hit OK. You'll notice that instantly that list has now been uh, quantified. So you'll also notice what it's being used for. So I may decide that, you know what, I may want to sort it based on the materials that are being used so I can kind of see where, where this stuff is being used and, and I can check it, kind of the checks and balances. I'm going to go up here to, again, I'll start in fields or we can go to filter, grouping, etc. Start with fields just so you see where I am. I'm going to go over to sorting and this time I'll say sort by what? Sort by type. Now it's going to put them in order of what they're used on. Um, I'll put a blank line between it and I'm going to put a footer. Um, that's just going to give us a total, so we'll know what the uh, total use of it, or how much square feet of JIP is being used for each one. I hit OK, and now you'll see how it's being broken down. Now we do have some square feet of JIP here that I'm not really sure what type is being pulled from. 
it could have been in that other area. We can add some more columns and see where it's pulling from. But as we come down here, see it's ceiling and joist, brick on wood stud, exterior stucco on wood stud. So this is the back side of those walls, most likely. And as we go down, you see lots and lots of different types. Do you need to do this? Not necessarily, but you notice how we can see where this is all of our interior gyp. This is the gyp on our, let's say, plumbing walls. Here's some gyp on, gyp on the soffit. And you can see where the information is being pulled from. So kind of a nifty little tool there. Let's go hit our quantities now. Heading down the list, <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the beginning. Here we are. That's fields, filter. We filtered out the particular gyp board. Uh, sorting and grouping, we're happy with that. I'm going to say grand totals. By putting, it on, putting this on, it'll give us a total grand, total grand total of the materials that we're using. We'll go to formatting here, and you'll see it says name. Um, I know it's gypsum wallboard, and that's what we want to quantify, but you can't quantify a name, so nothing shows up. If I'm using material, gypsum wallboard, and I want to know the area, see, it, it lights up and gives us the ability to set totals. So calculate totals. Um, now, when I hit OK on this, what it's going to do is going to take that one column area and calculate the totals. So now I have gypsum wallboard, and you'll see it says here uh, exactly what it is. Kind of nice. And we go on down the list. When you get to the bottom, you will notice that it says grand totals. Now, one thing you can do if you're not interested in looking at this whole overwhelming list, if you go back to where we were talking about uh, the settings earlier, I'm going to scroll through these again. And we started off here. And you'll see here we have the, the fields. Now here's some tidbits. If you have multiple buildings, include linked elements. It will also quantify those. So if you're getting weird numbers, you may have this checked, and it's pulling other data from other models. So this is a key to keep an eye on when you are quantifying. Uh, in the filter, you'll see here we, again, make sure that's set right. You can quickly change this to say, go find all of the wood siding, or go find whatever you're looking for on the building. And instantly, you can switch this, this uh, list. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, sorting and grouping. See it says here itemize every instance. If you turn this off and you hit OK, watch what it does to the list. See it gives us just totals. So a quick uh, breakdown, a lot smaller. Now you notice we've added spaces in here and we added totals. If you go back to that, we can do a couple things. Turn off this. Okay, turn off this. And now when I hit OK, oh, let's leave the grand totals on, excuse me. Hit OK on that, no spaces hit OK and see it gives us a list. Gypsum wallboard being used for what? There's our total square footage. You could print this up real quick um, and it gives you a, a quick down and dirty of what's happening here. I like starting with the bigger one because I can kind of see where things are coming from, how many of these weird ones I have, and then we can get the totals here. Now I would probably uh, go ahead and want to see what this is. And here's another tip. I'm working with the general contractor or the sub. He's like, so what is that? Uh, grab the actual item. Now I'm going to go back to uh, sorting and grouping and I'm going to say itemize every instance. One of the cool things is you can find those weird ones like we just did, right? Uh, what is a wall one? Grab it and then highlight in model. Um, it'll actually go out and find that wall for you. Okay. Now at this point you can see there's a wall. It says click to show button multiple times for different views. Show. And I just continue to hit this. And at one point I'm going to see that wall. Now as I go through, and you can see right there, I've got this little wall by the stairs. It's a little custom object um, that I built because of how the stairs come up in the model next to the window. So I can say, oh, okay, I'm going to put some jip around that. So that is why I'm picking that up. Uh, if you want to check it out better, you can use this little graphic here called Selection Box. It'll isolate the element, and you can see what's happening here. So it's a very small little isolated wall that I'm using to set up for the stair here. Uh, that's what that is, and a quick way to see how those things work. So a couple of tips there. I'm going to go back to our schedule, uh, control tab. That'll get us back in the earlier versions of Revit. Um, pop on through here, and we'll get back to our schedule. So that's some quick ways to, uh, to check things out. Again, it can be done for anything. If you're wondering, what is this? Why is it not showing up? Again, grab it. Go ahead, highlight and model, and go check it out. So a highlight and model. Uh, no good view can be found. Okay, so... I'm not sure why it's not working, but hey, sometimes you get some weird things, you have to go find it yourself. Um, but this is a very powerful tool. Now we've got all our uh, information here. That is how we can uh, figure out the quantities. If you want to know how many sheets, we can actually do some calculations just like we did in the previous uh, version of uh, previous video. Let's go ahead and, uh, and do that now. I'll go back to my fields and I'm going to add in a new calculated value. 
the calculated value is going to be number of sheets. Okay, at this time, common number. And uh, we're going to actually take the, we have the square footages here. So what I'm going to do is I have to calculate how many sheets will be here. So I'm going to go up top, fire the, well, excuse me, hit this button. I'm going to say take the material area. And once I have the material area, I'm going to say divide it by uh, 32 square feet. Okay. Now, what that's going to do is that is going to give us a sheet. Now, that's an 8 by 4 sheet. So 4 times 8 is 32. So I'm telling it to do that. Let's see what happens. We hit OK. I hit OK and we add a new column. Notice it's giving us the, the sheets that we need. So now that's kind of cool, but let's do something even more impressive. You want to impress your friends and family? First of all, let's get a count of sheets. We're going to go back to sorting and grouping, formatting here, okay? Number of sheets, let's give us a total. I know I kind of went fast on that compared to the others, um, but calculate totals and you'll see that it says 486 sheets. Now, let's say we know that there's a 10% or 12% or 8% drop off or uh, waste when we do the jip. So we can go back to our uh, fields here, again, starting there, and we and see it says number of sheets. Now, number of sheets, we can actually go ahead and do some crazy stuff here. I'm going to go edit it. Number of sheets plus waste. I'm thinking, what? Okay. Now, this is going to, it works like Excel. If you've ever worked in Excel or in, you know, let's say, in your typical uh, algebra, you have open parens, closed parens, order of operations, etc. So what I'm going to tell Revit to do is I'm going to say open parens. I'm going to say divide it by 32. Okay, once you divide it by 32, then multiply it, okay, with multiplication times 1.1. That's going to say add 10%. So I'm going to put in here so we know plus 10% waste. So number of sheets, total number of sheets plus 10% waste, or including, let's say including, that way it reads easier, number of sheets including a 10% waste factor. Okay, and that's a mouthful, but if I hit it by a bus tomorrow, uh, people will understand what I'm trying to do here. So we're going to take it and we're going to multiply it by 1, which is going to give us the total sheets, plus that 10%. Now you don't have to put the zero there just for clarity. Uh, you don't also don't have to put spaces in here. Uh, Revit takes them out anyhow, but it makes it easy to read. I hit OK. And now what we've done is, I want you to notice the number is 486. When we hit OK, notice 534. So what we've done is, we've calculated how many sheets of JIP we need for this project. Now the real trick is, your project has to be right. You can't, you, at this point in time, you have to make sure you're putting good information in so Revit can pull good information out. You may have to do a couple of projects. Talk to the general contractor, talk to, this, to the subs, and see how close you were on those numbers. And you can slowly adjust this factor. Let's say we had 25 sheets left over, or 30 sheets left over. You're thinking, well, that's about, that, you know, that's a, that's a few percentages that we had left over. So we may go in here and manipulate this number. We'll edit it, and let's say really they're only using, they have an 8% waste factor. So change this to 8%, come down here and change this to 08. So the next project we do, we run this schedule. Notice it says 534, we hit OK. Notice we're 525. So now we're closer to what we were shooting for before. So you can continue to refine these to make it happen. Now to even take it further, you can take this schedule and copy it from project to project. Now to do that, I'll go down toward the bottom, right click. See, it says copy to clipboard. You can copy it, paste it in another project. Quite powerful. So there you go. Tip of the week uh, is quantifying sheetrock or gypsum wallboard in a Revit project and considering for waste and drop-offs.